Hi, I'm Gila. I'm the online Pilates instructor and in this video I'm going to take you through five stretches that you can do when you've been out for a run. I know a lot of my clients do running as well and they often, I think most of them actually have acknowledged to me that mm, they don't stretch after they've run. Now, you don't need to stretch before you run, it's better to stretch afterwards because the muscles are warm and a bit looser. You'll get a better stretch if you stretch after you run. So I'm going to give you five stretches, won't take you too long, but you should do them after every run. Uh, if you don't, you'll end up with all the muscles around your hips, legs, knees, ankles getting tight and shorter. Um, and then you'll end up running and afterwards just being in pain. You'll end up with your hips aching or your knees aching or shin splints or, or you know, shin pain. And yeah, it, not good. If you do these stretches, it's actually gonna help your running. You'll find you'll, you'll have a better stride, um, better flow, and you're not gonna have that pain afterwards. So I really recommend that if you are a runner and you like going out running and enjoying a run, fantastic, keep doing it. But the one way to keep doing it is to stretch afterwards. So here are your five stretches. Number one, stretching out your calf. Now, you place one foot behind. If you want to have a wall knee to balance, that's fine. You want to make sure your heel is down at the back. Press the heel down. Front leg is bent and then you lean the weight forwards but keep pressing the heel down at the back. Now that's stretching your gastronemus muscle, okay, the big chunky muscle that we think of as the calf. Keep pressing down. If you can't really feel a stretch, or depend on your flexibility, you can lean against a wall and sort of push against the wall to push that heel down. You might find you get a bit of stretch. Hold it for a count of 15, okay, in that position. Then on the same leg, bend, bring it in a little bit and bend the back leg. Keep the heel down and bend the leg. And you should feel that stretching in a different part of the calf muscle, what we call the soleus muscle, and it's lower down um, and it lays underneath the gastronemus muscle. And that's often one that we forget to stretch and attaches onto the ankle and again can pull if it's very tight. So you bend that bottom leg and you should feel that street stretching deeper down. So then let's change legs. So the other leg goes back, heel down, front leg bent, lean forwards, but keep pushing that heel down at the back, feeling that stretch higher up in the calf and hold for 15, and count for 15. So the muscles get used to being longer. If we just hold the stretch for a couple of seconds, it's not really worth doing. Hold it for a good length of time. So this is straight after your run, remember? Okay, let's bring that same leg in, press the heel down, bend the leg. Now I'm a bit tighter on this side. I injured my ankle years and years ago on my left ankle and I don't have the same range of movement, uh, motion in that leg and I can feel I can't bend down quite so much on that side. You might find that's the same with you. You've got one side that's tighter than the other. Okay, so we've done our calves. Let's do our hip flexors now. So. Again, take one leg back. This time, lift the heel off the floor and drop, bend the knee a little bit. And you're going to tuck the tailbone under. So you're gonna scoop under and you're pushing the hip forwards. And you should feel that stretching through the front of your hip. Again, if you find it tricky to balance, hold onto a wall or something, you can drop the knee down and do the same stretch if you feel a bit more balance there. So when we've held that for 15, keep pushing the hip forward, we can change legs. So again, knee, knee down is one option. Scoop the tailbone under, we're stretching through the front here, the top part here. These hip flexors attach onto the pelvis, onto that leg. They will have been working really hard as you've been running to move the legs, so keep Pushing under, hold it there. Remember your alternative, if you want to, is here with the toe tucked under, again scooping under, feeling that stretch. So you do the one that works, you can do both if you want to, 
do the ones that you think, oh yes, that, that feels like I need a stretch. We all feel it in slightly different places. And holding it there. Okay, there are hip flexors. Let's do our quads now. So this is one thing that uh, people do quite a bit, is standing here and drawing in their quad. What you find though is um, that often you lose your balance. So hold on to a wall. You want to make sure both the knees are together so it's not pointing forwards or backwards, the knees are together. You're squeezing the heel into the bottom and pushing the hips forwards. Now if you find this doesn't really work for you, I've got some alternatives. So you can lay down and do the same thing, the same stretch, doesn't matter what your upper body's doing. Keep the knees together, right? So the leg's not pointing up. Knees pointing down in line with the other leg. Draw the heel into the bottom. I find I actually get a better stretch there. Push the hips forwards towards me. So you can hold it there. And you might find you're just a bit more stable than um, having to stand up on one leg and balance. And once you lose your balance, you can't get an effective stretch. So again, hold it up for a count of 15. And then I'll do the other option on the other leg. So you can repeat that on your side or laying on your front. This time the knees have to stay in alignment because the floor is there. Bring the heel in and push the hips to the floor. So I'm pushing down here, pushing my hips down into the floor at the same time as squeezing my heel into my bottom. And you can feel it in a different part of your thigh to when we did those hip flexor stretches. You might feel it lower down near the knee a bit more. And then release. So there's a couple of options there to stretch out your quads. So we've done hip flexors, we've done quads, we've done calves. Let's do hamstrings here at the back. Few options again. So one option is standing. You can have your hands on your bent leg, one leg is straight, and then you can lean forwards over that leg. The toe can be flat or lifted. If it's lifted, you get a deeper stretch. And again, that might be enough for you. You might feel it here. You might feel it in your back a little bit as well if you're particularly tight in the hamstrings. And then release, and then let's change legs. So hands are on your bent leg, the other leg is straight, leaning forwards, pick the heel up if you want to, just taking it as far as so you feel that stretch through the hamstrings. And I'll give you an alternative for this as well. Again, if you want to do all of them, all the better, because they will stretch in slightly different places, but some stretches you'll be able to feel and some you won't. Another stretch that I really like, that I teach in my classes, but would be great to do after running, is to sit with the legs out. If they need to be bent a little bit, fine, don't worry. And just reach forwards as far as you can. Try not to collapse in the back, lengthen the back and just reach forwards as far as you can. You can point the toes and you'll feel a bit of a stretch then through the back of the legs. Hold it. So we'll hold it for a count of 10. And then what we're going to do is stay where we are and we're just gonna bring the toes up towards us and flex the feet. You might find your heels come off the floor, that's great. And can you feel that now stretching deeper through the hamstrings? We've lengthened the hamstrings by flexing the feet up and it's increased that stretch. So now if we point the toes again, if we think, oh, that feels a bit easier now. So see if you can encourage that stretch a little bit more. You might find you can take it a little bit further. Don't force it. Okay. And then we flex the feet up again. Hold it here. Feel that stretch come on again. Keep breathing. Feels a bit deeper. And again, this is really great to do after a run when your muscles are nice and warm. You'll get such a better stretch really increase your flexibility than if you do it before a run. Point the toes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and you'll find that you can go a little bit further.
over. So you can do that two or three times. That's a really effective one to lengthen the hamstrings. Um, and if you do find you suffer with back aching, it can be because of tight hamstrings, whether you run or not actually. Okay. Your other option for your hamstring stretch is to lay down and to bring one leg in towards you. You can have it bent or straight. You can have the other one leg bent or straight, doesn't really matter. And you can again, what I often do in classes, we point and flex the foot a few times or do little circles and that releases and increases the stretch. And then keep the foot still and again just relax into the stretch. So there's three different hamstring stretches there that you can do. You can just choose the one that works for you. We'll do a different one each time if you want to, if you want a bit of variety. Okay, hug that knee in and change. So we're holding, you can hold behind the thigh if that's better for you. Remember, you can have that leg bent if it's too much pressure on your spine. And we draw that leg in a few circles. On point and flex. And keep the foot still and hold it there. And then release. And then your last stretch, your fifth stretch that I think you should do if you're a runner in particular, is I would take your shoes off for this one. So you've come in from your run, you've done your calf stretch, your hip flexors, your quads and your hamstrings. And now we're gonna do the shins. These parts here, they get so tight, don't they? Um, and this is where, you know, the, the tension builds up. If you don't stretch, um, you're gonna end up with problems and pain, you know, like shin splints and things, which you would probably, I'm guessing, rather avoid. So, what we're going to do, it's a really hard area to get a stretch in. And the best stretch I've found is to, the, the muscle comes down here and attaches um, round onto the, onto the big toe. And we want to try and gently push the big toes down and the toes down so you can feel a stretch. And I can feel that there. Now, you might be going, okay, okay, I can't reach my toes. So option is you can get someone to help you, but make sure they do it gently. Or get, oh, I've just got my son's football here, but get a ball or something so you haven't got to reach as far. It doesn't matter, it could even be a big ball or anything else, which you could place on your toes. And you can just then, with the weight of your hands, that's all you need, is gently apply a little bit of pressure and you'll feel that stretch um, through the front of your shins. You're still really having trouble, bend one leg, um, move one leg out of the way and try and do one leg. You might find that easier, you might not. But you'll get a nice stretch through the front of the shins. That's really important. I really wouldn't stress that one enough. And even if you don't run, actually, it's a really nice stretch to do. So, quick recap. Your five stretches are your calf. Okay, so we had straight leg and bent leg. We've got your hip flexors here or here. You've got your quad stretch, okay, which we did standing or laying on our side or tummy. Your hamstrings, which again, I showed you standing, uh, sitting or laying, and then the front of those shins. So they are five ones. So do them after every run, and I promise you, you will notice a difference. Your running will flow, that will feel much better, and you won't get any pain through your hips, your lower back, or your legs when you're running. Let me know how you get on with it. I hope that's been useful and I'll see you next time.